Global central banks are badly losing their war against crude inflation, Michael Snyder reports. Even though central banks all over the world have been raising interest rates in recent months, food prices just keep continuing to go up and there are a couple of reasons why this is happening. First of all, demand for food is very inelastic. In other words, no matter how high or low prices go, people are still going to need to eat, of course. That's one thing that's fundamental in their lives. So even if the Federal Reserve sent interest rates into the stratosphere, people would still need to go to the supermarket to get food for themselves and their families. Secondly, we're facing some severe long-term supply problems. As I've detailed in previous articles, food production is being significantly hindered in a number of difficult, different ways, and that is not going to change anytime soon. There simply is not enough food to feed everyone on the planet, and suppliers are only going to get tighter in the months. Uh, the, the supplies are getting tighter in the months ahead, and the years ahead. No matter what central banks do, this is going to push food prices steadily higher. But even though higher interest rates have not had much of an impact on food prices, we know that they would dramatically affect Western economies in many other ways. Economic activity is starting to dry up all over the Western world. And as I discussed the other day, Europe has already plunged into a recession. In addition, higher interest rates have burst the global housing bubble. And here in the United States, we have entered what will ultimately become the greatest commercial real estate crisis in our entire history. On top of everything else, hundreds of small and mid-sized banks are now struggling to survive because higher rates have blown giant, giant black holes in their balance sheets. After seeing all the damage they've caused, officials at the Federal Reserve finally decided to pause their interest rate hike campaign on Wednesday. Federal Reserve policymakers left the central bank's benchmark interest rates unchanged despite inflation that has run above its target for over two years, saying the pause would allow it to gauge the effects of earlier hikes on the economy. The Fed, the Fed said on Wednesday that it would hold its benchmark rate at a range of 5% to 5.25%, a range it set at its May meeting and the highest since the Fed cut rates at the summer of 2007. At the same time, the Fed signaled that it expects to hike at least two more times this year. If they had any sense, they would start cutting rates, but that probably won't happen for a while. The good news is that higher rates have crushed economic activity through enough that the overall rate of inflation has started to come down. Overall, consumer prices increased 4% from a year earlier, down from 4.9% in April, and a 40-year high of 9.1% last June, according to the Labor Department's Consumer Price Index. Of course, you have to take those numbers with a grain of salt. If the inflation rate was still calculated the way it was back in 1980, it would still be well into the double digits right now. And when you look at core CPI, it has barely budged over the past year, and when you dig into core CPI, the news is not nearly so good. In fact, it's downright bad. Core CPI, excluding food and energy prices, rose 0.4% month on month. On an annual basis, core CPI rose by 5.3%. To put that number into perspective, the core CPI increase in May 2022 was 6%. That means the increase in core CPI has barely budged. That is very troubling. And what is even more troubling is the fact that food prices in the United States just continue to go up. But what the data also reveal is that food prices continue to increase. And according to the new government data, food at home prices went up 5.8% for the year ending in May. For food away from home, prices have jumped 8.3%. That is takeout and restaurants and stuff. Once again, it's important to remember that the way inflation is calculated has changed dramatically over the decades. If food inflation was still calculated the way it was back in 1980, those numbers would be way into the double digits. And even with all the messaging that they do to the numbers, the massaging they do to the numbers uh, these days, there are certain categories of food where the official numbers that we have been given actually show double digits inflation on a yearly basis. Frozen vegetables up 18.7%, frozen drinks up 15.8%, 
Bread up 15, uh, 12.5 percent. Fats and oils up 11.8 percent. Candy up 11.6 percent. Cakes, cookies, and cupcakes up 11 percent. Baby food and formula up 10.1 percent. The cost of living has been escalating much faster than our paychecks have, and this is putting enormous financial stress on American families. Thanks to the rapidly rising cost of living, more U.S. adults than ever are being forced to find a side hustle. As many as two in five adults in the U.S. have a side hustle, according to the recent bank rate survey of 2,500 plus adults, backing up lending tree data from early this year that found side gigs are up by 13% over the past two years, and recent Deloitte data that found more millennials and Gen Zers are adding on part-time jobs, younger workers are more likely to need an extra job. 53% of Gen Zers and half of millennial, millennials have won bank rate found fines and compared to only 40% of Gen Xers and 24% of baby boomers. It's a reflection of the state of the economy, which has left many Americans, even those earning six figures, feeling like they're living paycheck to paycheck. And at the end of the day, side hustles have become a necessity for many who are struggling to complete to compete with the pace of inflation and try to save amid recession fears. And food inflation is also one of the reasons they demand why demand at food banks around the nation has been absolutely exploding in recent years, months. For example, just check out what happened in one area of Oklahoma. Food banks across Green Country, country are seeing a sp uh, spike in the number of people using their services. Two issues are at play. It's more expensive to make ends meet because of inflation and emergency SNAP benefits are ending. Just since March, the food bank said there's been a 50% increase in people who need help. Unfortunately, this is not happening in, is, 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 is not just happening in the United States. In fact, food inflation is a much bigger problem over in Europe right now. Whether in Spain, Hungary, or Italy, food prices keep rising in Europe even as inflation relents. Food inflation reaches a historic peak in March, up 19.2% over the previous year and fell to 12.5% in May. Governments across the continent are trying to come up with solutions. Spain waived its 5% tax on food products. France reached a three-month pricing agreement with supermarkets. And Croatia mandated price controls. But the interventions did not, don't seem to be sufficient, and even staples or typical products are affected. In Italy, the price of pasta has surged by 14% in the past year, twice as much as overall inflation, and the nation's tables are paying a steep price for higher energy costs following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, along with the resulting wheat shortages. All over the world, food prices are moving up faster than wages are, and the outlook for global food production 2023 is not promising. Sadly, this is just the very beginning of this crisis. In my latest book, I spent several chapters detailing a number of nightmarish long-term trends that are going to absolutely crush global food production during the years to come. No matter what our leaders now do now, global famine is inevitable. We aren't able to feed everyone in the world right now, and the global food supplies are only going to get tighter. But most people don't understand how long-term trends how the long the long-term trends that we are facing and most people just assume that the bumps in the road that we're currently facing are just temporary and that everything will be just fine in the long run don't be one of those people and this is by michael snyder he says about the author my name is michael my brand new book entitled end times is now available on amazon in addition to my new book i've written six other books that are available on amazon including seven year apocalypse lost prophecies of the future of america the Beginning of the End and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short and I need help getting these warnings into the hands of as many people as possible. I have also started a brand new Substack newsletter and I encourage you to subscribe so you won't miss any of my articles. I've published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog and the American Dream of the Most Important News. And the articles that I publish on those sites are published on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. 
I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites, but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. The material contained in this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal, business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook and Twitter. In any way that you can share these articles with others, definitely great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. This is by Michael Snyder on the Economic Collapse blog. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.